So, uh, what OLED is this? Ooh, this actually is not an OLED. This is a TCL R646. Oh. Hi, I'm Abby from Ratings.com, where we said we weren't going to talk about OLEDs anymore, and we're making good on that. In this video, we'll look at how the past 12 months have treated the other 80 TVs on our test, the LCD models. We'll see how our expectations compare to reality and put in our predictions for the next year of the test. One year ago, we embarked on an ambitious project to test the longevity of 101 TVs and three monitors. Initially, when we developed this test, we expected TVs would follow a bathtub curve of failure. This curve supposes that at first you'll see a lot of stuff break. These are the low-hanging fruit the lemons. And looking back at our results, that was the case. Though we had a few failures and issues along the way, five TVs failed completely and had to be pulled off the test and repaired within the first six months. We're not counting the LG monitor here since that was entirely our fault. These five failures weren't necessarily due to the stressful nature of the test, but more likely the result of plain old bad luck with that TV's quality of production or one of its components meaning it was equally as likely to break down on the test as it was in your living room. If we take our timeline and put it into how many simulated years or months that is, it's about one and a half to two years for a typical household, assuming about 2,000 hours of on time per year. But we're past that initial drop off and find ourselves in the middle of the tub. It's been months since we've had a complete failure, but that doesn't mean nothing's been failing. The nature of failures has changed. It isn't a power supply or boot loop or some component rendering the TV useless. It's a lot less sudden. We're watching the gradual decline of these TVs. The question these days isn't so much how long will my TV last, but rather how long should I tolerate it once it starts to fail? For example, would you watch the game on this? Or how about hosting a movie night with this as the centerpiece? There's no shame if you said, yeah, it's not that bad. What you're willing to tolerate is purely subjective and entirely dependent on your circumstances. As we move forward with our test, this tolerance threshold becomes more important. You gotta remember, this is an accelerated test. At home, this blueness, for example, would develop slowly over the years, gradual changes over time that add up. You might not even realize your screen is blue until someone points it out to you. Once you notice it though, it's all you can see, and for the most part, it never goes away. It sounds obvious to say that TVs fail slowly, but considering the stressful nature of this test, it's impressive so many of them have lasted this long and are still chugging along well. So, with no new complete failures to report, what is happening? Well, we've kept you up to date about our OLEDs, but just to reiterate, at this point, all the OLEDs have burn-in that is visible in real content, except for the few that we added later to the test. Burn-in is no reason to panic, as this test is designed to accelerate the appearance of burn-in. You, at home, will likely not experience this level of burn-in after five years, so long as you watch varied content. The real kicker is in the LCD models. There's a lot more variance in the LCD TV's performance, which is partially due to the variety of technology found under the LCD umbrella. To show you what we mean, we've categorized the LCD models into a few groups. No issues, issues only visible in test patterns, issues visible in real content, and it might be time for a new one. By and large, most of the LCD models are fine. Of the 81 LCD models on the test, 52 have no issues to report. About 22 LCD models are beginning to show the toll of the test, but only in our test patterns. For example, the TCL 6 series R646 has image retention, but it's only visible on a 5% gray slide. And it isn't the only one. The LG Nano 75 2022 also has some image retention. Others, like the Amazon Fire TV Omni series, have interesting artifacts that seem severe on the test slides but aren't noticeable in real content. Likewise with the Samsung AU8000 and its creepy little owl eyes. We expect in the coming months these issues will only get worse and we'll end up moving some of these models to the next category. For these TVs, the issues are visible. They may not seem so bad to the untrained eye, but all you have to do is put it next to a TV without issues and the difference is obvious. 
even here, you can see the issues are different. It isn't simple uniformity issues. For some, like Samsung's The Frame, the 2022 model, the whole bottom of the screen is washed out. We fondly refer to it as the beach. Others, like the Samsung TU8000, must have caught the winter blues, while the TCL S546 2021 QLED hasn't left Barbie summer behind. Again, these issues will only get worse. You may be able to temporarily compensate for them by recalibrating the colors, but that only buys you time. Some TVs are reaching the point of no return, where color correction isn't enough to remove the tones. Like, look at this guy, the Hisense U8H. If this were yours, would you keep it or replace it? That big blue spot in the center might be enough to warrant a new purchase, but at the same time, maybe not. Three things are certain in life. Death, taxes, and your TV eventually becoming unwatchable. The key word there is eventually. As it stands, many of these TVs are doing just fine, chugging along despite clocking in nearly five years of nearly constant CNN as part of a torture test. And that's kind of a relief. They're doing better than we thought they would. But that probably won't last. Looking at the bathtub curve again, we're expecting to see an increase of wear out failures as the test goes on. We expect to see more issues crop up quickly in the next few months. Now we'll dive deeper into these LCDs, hopefully open them up and look at what's happening inside, but we already have a good idea of a few of the mechanisms at play, we just won't speculate too much until we've investigated a bit more. And to keep yourself in the loop with our findings, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. So, was this what you were expecting to see after a year? Let us know in the comments. Until next time, I'm Abby from Ratings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs. Wow. Wow. <laughs> teaser. Toaster. Toaster teaser. The trailer. The trailer for toasters. We should make a trailer for the toasters video. Is it the next one? I would, I would think so. This winter, one toast.